and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Katie, and today we are going to be having fun with vellum in our Bible gardens. So if you are new to my channel, I just started a new series called Start a Bible Garden with Me. So I'm going to teach you how to print on vellum. It's super easy. The only thing you really can't print on vellum without having to change like the, the darkness or whatever is if there's a lot of dark shading in it but if it's just an outline of like, like a coloring page or a very light shading then you are good to go and you don't need to edit anything so i'm going to show you the easiest way to print on vellum i got mine from the paper studio over at hobby lobby not sponsored but i finally was able to go buy some so we did so i'm going to do it in over voice for you all and i'm going to share a little video on how i print from pic collage that's the app that i use personally but it probably works very similar to Canva, just on my Samsung, which is what I use. I use an Android phone to print. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we will be back to have fun with the printables. Okay, guys, here is the Pic Collage app. I'm sorry, it's so small. But I just click on Freeform to just create a simple layout. Then I click on Layout and then Size. And I usually scroll over to the 8x10, usually because that's roughly the size of a printed page is gonna be. Then I go to pictures and add in the pictures that I wanna add in. I clicked on the four that I wanted. I usually make kind of a graph of like four, that way I can print them all at once. So I kind of just measured each one out to kind of give them kind of even in each spot. And they don't really have to be exact. I just try to make it as close as I possibly can to the same size and uh, yes the pic collage app does have that like um, icon at the bottom right hand corner but I usually keep all my pictures above that that way it doesn't show up when I cut to use them in my Bible and I'm sure you can do this in another app as well I just think pic collage is one of the easiest things to use for the Android phone so I just measure and try to figure out exactly where I want it to be. These did turn out a little bit smaller than I thought they were going to be, so I think I may have print printed them just a little too small, but that's okay. And so once I figure out where I want it to be, I just click save, and that's pretty much it. And then you can click print right after. I do tend to make the saved document into a PDF file first, uh, but you don't have to. I just have found that my printer works slower if I don't make a PDF file. Then I click out of the app, go to my gallery on my main page on my phone. Then I just click the three dots on the bottom right corner, click print. And then I just wait until it loads and click print. Now that I showed you how to print those printables, they are free coloring pages. I will link the website down below where you can find them. I just looked up free Bible, I can't talk today, free Bible verse coloring pages on Google and I found one that I think is going to look really nice in here. So I usually print four to a sheet just because it's a little bit easier for me and I think the one I'm going to use is probably going to be this top one. Now when I printed it, uh, mine is actually a little bit lighter than what it probably would be because I, I think my ink's running a little bit low, which is okay. It's totally fine. We're not going to, you know, mess with it or anything. You know, that's just my fault. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and cut these. So I usually just make them into four even pieces. And yes, they will be smaller than my Bible. So if you have a bigger Bible, then you want to print bigger than I do. But I will let you know what size this one is once I'm finished cutting it out. And... I think I'm actually gonna use the flower one because I really like that one a lot. So I'm just gonna cut it out. Maybe have a little bit of a white border around it. I also need a new um, new blade already on this thing. I just replaced it like a couple months ago and it's already going. So I'm like, great, that's always good. I think, I think I'm gonna have to cut near the flower because it looks like it does have like a, a border or something. Okay, this one is going to be quite a bit smaller, but I am okay with that. There 
There we go. Okay, so this one in particular that I cut out is, looks like a little over four and a half long by a little, almost four inches wide. So that is, so it's almost, almost a square. That's the size that I just printed out today. It is a little bit on the small side. Yeah, it is, it is quite a bit smaller than what I imagined it to be. I'm wondering if I usually print out two, because that could be the reason why these are smaller. I usually might just print out two. But I do kind of like this size, so we're going to go with it. So this one is for verse, looks like uh, Psalm 121.2. I just want to make sure that that's correct. So Psalm 121.2. Hey, we did Psalm last time, too. Psalm 121.2. And we want to make sure it actually says the right one. I think it's going to be the next page. Yes, so Psalm 121.2 says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So it's not really like, like this is my, my Bible garden on how God sees us. But honestly, this is how God sees us. Like no matter what we need help with, he is always there. And he sees us as his children. He sees us as, you know, that we need help and everything. So I like that. Okay, so what I color with, which I'm pretty sure you can do colored pencils, I'm sure you can do alcohol markers, but my favorite thing to do, which I've, done, I've used before, is Tombow brush pens. So I have some Tombow brush pens in here. I'm definitely thinking some blues, greens, maybe some purples might be nice. I need to reorganize my pens, that's all I know. <laughs> and then maybe some pinks. I might even just use all pink for the flowers, but we're going to grab a couple of the pinks. All right, so trying to decide what colors I want to use. I don't think I will. Well, maybe I will use a purple. Hmm. Oh, I did see we do have some kind of daisies. I think the yellow would look good at that. If it shows up. It might not show up. So these are the colors that I'm thinking about using. I don't think I'm going to use a purple. So we're going to stick with this palette. So... For the pinks, I am using 723, these are the numbers that I'm using, 723, 761, and 743. So those are the pink colors. I'll try to line them up for you all so you can take a screenshot or whatever for those pinks. And then for the green, I am using a 133. For the yellow, it's 062. And for the blue, it is 526. And it's probably a super dark blue, but that's okay. And I'm going to need to do a little background because it's not going to show up. I might have to put this on a white background so you guys can see. There, that's a little bit better. We got a white background so that way we can actually see our colors. But it doesn't need to be exact. I like my Tombow brush pens just to kind of add a little bit of color. And just a heads up, let it dry before you put it in your Bible or before you close it or whatever. But Tombow brush pens seem to go pretty well with this. Which actually kind of surprises me because it's like, you know, it is a water-based marker, but I have not had an issue with it. And I'm just kind of dotting the pen around with the cone flowers just to kind of get it, give it a little bit of, you know, rather than just coloring it in. You kind of want to make them stay that cone shape looks so or kind of just dotting it around. Have, you, don't, you don't have to get every single little black spot or blank spot. Just enough to get this, the little dots. I love cone flowers. You know, I never used to like them, but I kind of like them now. And maybe they should have been purple, but who's to say if there are blue ones? I don't know. Are there blue ones? Let me know. Maybe I'll look it up after I'm done filming here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Are there any more little cone flowers in this spot? I think this, these are down here. You can leave a couple black and white if you want to, but I'm probably going to color most of this. Since we are here to have fun. It's a nice easy day today. I can't just coloring, having fun, working on our flowers and everything. Our leaves. I'm going to go ahead and do the daisy. I'm trying to not touch it as I'm working because you want to. This yellow might be way too light because you want to make sure you don't want to touch the ink until you're until it's completely dry. Yeah, the yellow is a little bit on the pale side, but 
And also, after you're done printing, I would let it sit for a little bit before you start coloring. That way your ink is dry before you start coloring. Because it might be a little bit still wet, because the yellow, yellow is not bleeding really, but you always want to make sure it's nice and dry. Actually, I might need the orange color, now that I think about it, with the daisies. Daisies are kind of a very pale yellow. All right, are there only two daisies? There are only two daisies. Okay. Oh, no, wait, forgot. That one down there. I'm actually kind of glad my ink was running out a little bit because it did kind of give it a little bit more of a lighter color, which I kind of like today. There we go. Okay, and I'm, I am going to use that orange color that I was thinking about earlier, but I didn't use. Uh, this is number 946 for the orange. I think this is actually my favorite orange, is 946. And there is a B here, but I think I'm just going to leave in black and white. I'm just going to color the centers of our daisies. There we go. Okay, now let's see. Have all these lovely pinks that we can use. There's some buds here. I think I'll make the buds the light pink. Oh yeah, I like that. Okay. And we might make our butterfly blue maybe. See how that works out. I think these are probably the same flowers because they're on the same plant, so I'm just going to go ahead and make them pink too. There we go. There. I like that. I think that's a good pink flower. Um, let's see if there's anything else that we can give pink to. Maybe I'll do pink over here. Actually, this probably was, actually, that was probably blue. That was my fault. I don't know if I can wipe that off quickly or not. Nope. Oh, wow. We're already dry. Okay. <laughs> see what I was telling you that, that to let it dry, apparently it dries really quickly. I did not think it was going to dry that fast, but we can kind of cover up the pink. There. Yeah, I like I like the blue better up there. Okay. I think most everything else is greenery for the most part. Yeah, and then we have the rose, which I think I'm gonna mix a little bit of the 761 and 743 to kind of get the pink. I'm gonna start with a lighter pink. And actually this is not as light as you think. Oh, I guess it is. Because normally when I use this pink for other projects, it shows up really dark. But on vellum, it's quite light, which I like. So to kind of give it a light, dusky pink color. That's pretty. I like that. So if you all have any ideas on what you'd like to see in our Bible garden, please let me know down in the comments. I want to make sure I do videos that you guys will enjoy. I do have lots of plans, but of course I want to share some stuff that you are all going to be interested in. You know, not just, you know. You know, if you have different ideas, something new that I haven't tried yet, you know, I would love to do that with you all. Okay, and I don't know if this is going to be too dark of a pink. Ooh, it's not. Well, maybe a little bit. So we're just going to highlight the, the rose just a little bit. Yeah, that was probably was a bad choice, but oh well. Too late now, it's probably already dry. We're just going to get a little bit of highlight around the rose. Oh well, a little bit on the dark side, but that's okay. Just kind of squiggling it around a little bit. It's not bad, I mean, you know. It kind of makes it look almost like a peony more than a rose. I'm not mad about that. And we're going to give a little bit of the pink at the bottom there. There we go. And now I'm going to go in with the green. And I'm wondering if I should do two different greens. I've got... I've got a sage green here, number 312. Actually, I think that might even be better than the one that I was going to use. Hmm, maybe we'll use a little bit of both, or maybe we'll make the butterfly that color. I'm trying to decide. I might. Ooh, that's darker than I thought. <laughs> I did not think it was that dark. Okay, we might stick with the other green then. Okay, yeah. Ooh, that was a lot darker than I thought. Maybe I'll use that for the stems, maybe? Oh yeah, the pale green, I think, goes a little bit better. Yeah, I think we're just going to stick with the pale green instead. Because that dark green was quite, quite the dark note there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into all the leaves with this night, 
nice light green tone. And you can shade as much as you want or just make it really simple like I am. Just kind of having fun and coloring. And I believe I have used colored pencils on vellum before. I think I've used it with the coloring page and it turned out really nice too. I think vellum takes quite a few different mediums really nicely. I've done um, Tombow brush pens, I've done color pencils, I may have done gelatos. I'm not sure, I can't remember, but I might have. Oh, that's another flower. I thought that was a leaf. It is not. Hmm, what kind of flower are you? Interesting. So we're just gonna give the nice green a note around all the leaves and everything. This is turning out really cute. I especially love the cone flowers. They are super cute. So we're going to get a little bit of green into that, whatever that is over that, on that side. It was not a flower, but I don't know what it was. I guess it was just a nice little leafy thing. Okay, and then down here, there is some kind of flower. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make it another pink one. Um, maybe a medium pink color. Yeah. Yeah, even though it's it's funny, even though this cap is a lot lighter than this, um, or maybe not, for some reason I was confusing myself. Never mind. <laughs> I just thought this one was darker than this one. It's not. It's just my brain working. My brain working quite oddly, I guess. Oh, well. Um, trying to think of what I want to make the butterfly. Hmm. I think I'll do orange. Oops, as I shoot it across the table. I am going to do it orange. Oh, perfect, oh yes. I think the orange was the right choice for the butterfly. It kind of ties it in, it has a little orange. I like that. Okay, now, easy way to tip this in. You can use, well, three different methods, honestly, or three different tools. You can use the washi tape method, which I have shown you in many, many videos over the years to do uh, a tip in. But because these borders are so, 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 so small, very small, uh, we are going to use a different method. And it's not double-sided tape. Well, technically it is. But this is way too wide, if you can tell. If I put it in there, there's no way that's going to fit. My favorite tool, which I tend to keep in a, in a Ziploc bag, just to keep dust and everything away from it. That way it's all fresh and no, no dust or grime is going to get on it. This double-sided tape, it is so thin, it fits perfectly in that crevice. It is my favorite tool. I got this on Amazon. I can't remember what I was searching for. I think I was just searching for like some kind of tape to put in here. And this is the best one that I've ever found. So you just find your end here and it's single sided sticky until you are completely done. So I'm going to use my white paper again, just to flip it over here. And it's only sticky on one side. So you don't have to worry about the one. So I'm just going to eyeball how much I need. You don't need to go all the way, but close enough to the edge. Whoops, I'm stuck to my finger. It's hot here, <laughs> so I'm trying to hurry because there's no fan in here. Okay, so you're just going to stick it to the very, very edge. Oh, make sure make sure you know. Ooh, I just put it on the wrong side almost. It's on this side I have to put it on. Ooh, that was really close. Thank you, Lord, for telling me to put it on that side. So put it as close to the edge as you possibly can. But this is where, like, you're not going to use it like washi tape. You don't want it to like, you know, half on, half off. No, you just want it on the paper. And you're gonna just press down, make sure it's all sticking properly there. Okay, and then all you're gonna do is peel off the backing. And then it'll be double-sided tape, if I can get it. There we go. And sometimes nails are a blessing, sometimes they're not. There we go. Okay, now we can move this over. Just make sure before you put your tape down, just make sure you're putting it on the right side of your page. So it's gonna be on the left-hand side when you flip it over, it's technically the right. So we're just gonna press in like that. And we're just gonna slide our finger down the crevice there just to make sure it's sticky. And there we go. That's how cute it is. Look how cute that is. So let me zoom out just a little bit. I also lost my lighting. I do apologize. There we go. So this is what it looks like. I absolutely 
love it. I think this is a perfect project. Super easy. All you need is a printer. I have a like just an HP inkjet and I've had that thing for like literally probably 15 years almost. So it's an old one, but it still works and I love using it. So and and I love it. It's perfect. And also, I want to give you a handy tip. I'm not sponsored by them, but if you print a lot like for crafts or or, or you know Bible journaling or whatever and you have an HP printer ch please 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 check out HP Insta Ink it is it is from HP directly um, they only pay the, they only charge you per page so if you're only gonna print like 10 pages a month it's like one or two dollars I think uh, I got the well right now I have the hundred page plan I think I could go down a little bit but that's even that that's only like I think $6.99, between $6.99 and $7.99 a, a month. And it's 100 pages. You don't pay for ink ever. They send you the ink. So you only pay per page. Yes, you have to buy your own paper and your own printer. But other than that, the ink is completely free. You don't have to worry about your ink drying out on you. If you don't use it for months at a time, you can cancel at any time. You can change your plan at any time. It is so helpful. So I will link their website down below if you want to check it out. And if you print a lot. It is definitely worth it. So anyways, I hope you had fun today. I know I did. I really enjoy doing stuff like this in my Bible. It is so much fun and it's just so easy. And yes, it, this one is actually quite a bit smaller than the page, but you know what? That's okay. You know, you can make it as small or as big as you want. Um, technically, I don't have anything sticking out of here today. I was going to say nothing is sticking out today on the outer side. I just realized that. But you know not everything has to stick out, you know? It's okay if, you know, because when you open it, you know, and you flip through, you'll see that, oh, look, there's a paper sticking out there. But I really like how this turned out. You can even put a piece of washi tape if you wanted to as like a border to kind of stick out. But I just like it the way it is. I think it's really cute and lots of fun. I could even do a tab. I don't have anything with me at the moment, but I can do a tab up here just as a little note that says, like, here is our page. So... I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a wonderful, sorry. I hope y'all have a wonderful, blessed day and I will see you all in the next video.